So this model is now included with Curve Basher, but it's a separate download. But it's a mesh just intended for practice. It's not really made with Blender at all. Anyway, the first tool I want to show you is Curve Cast. So if you press C, you can cast a curve right there. And you can press this as many times as you want, and your viewport will not be locked while you're using the tool. So you can click to define one endpoint and then reposition yourself. And when you're ready, create another endpoint. Also, notice that these curves are conveniently selected. So at any time, we can press J to run the Curve Basher or the Preset Browser and replace these curves with anything else by simply scrolling. So let me get a better angle right here. And we have Profile Types. If we press 2, we can switch to the Array Types, which are my favorite. And if we press 3, we can use the Single Kit Bash Types. So we're not going to go too in-depth into the strengths of all of these, but I'll just say that the array types are my favorite, but I'm going to press X just to make sure that they fit perfectly within the bounds of the curve. Sometimes they don't actually match, so I'm going to make sure that X or stretch fit is enabled. And the reason array types are my favorite is because you can select a curve and then press tab, and if you extend one of these handles, Notice how the array just keeps adding more elements to prevent any sort of stretching. So that's really, really cool. Also, if you ever have a really heavy mesh that makes it hard to select that curve in the middle, you can do this. Select the array, press J to activate the browser, but then press Tab, and that's going to exit the tool and select all of the curve points for you. So you can do anything you want with them. Also, let's talk about the wire generator, which is another very important tool. But this one requires primitives, so I'm going to create some boxes right here, or cubes. Just two is enough. Actually, how about we do three? Let's do three. Cool. So this tool, you will not find it with any hotkey. You'll find it under the Shift A menu, Curve, Wire Generator. And if I click on this, it will do this. So it just generates curves that intersect those volume, but there's tons of options to play with. This tool is pretty amazing. For example, I can enable gravity and it will create some intermediate points for me. I can change the range of this tool. I can change the handles to be aligned instead of automatic. I can change the randomness algorithm to be parallel. So it's a little bit more organized. This is more obvious when you have tons of uh, cables, by the way. You can also use the array mode and specify an axis. So this is the X axis. And let's say, I don't know, I want one by 10 instead and do something like that. So there's so many options to this tool. Definitely experiment with this. And another thing I wanted to show you is uh, a mesh to curve bash tool. So this is for applying any sort of mesh like these, this cable comb and this cable connector. <laughs> let's pretend. Uh, to any sort of curve. For example, I'm going to curve cast right here. Then I'm going to press J and scroll to find a more suitable preset like this one. I'm going to press T to twist. So we have a lot of different transformations, by the way. So S for scale, R for rotate, and uh, T for twisting, among uh, others. So I'm just going to do that. And I want to apply this cable comb to that curve. So I'm just going to drag select it and make sure that the mesh is still the active object. And then right click, mesh to curve bash. So this option is all the way at the bottom of your right click context menu. And there you have it. All we have to do is just scale this. And I rotated my curve so it's not going to be aligned perfectly. But one thing we can do, for example, is use fit to curve, uh, change the offset. I'm just going to use a count of two, and now we have a couple of cable combs. Another cool thing you can do with Mesh Curve Bash is cable connectors. So let's curve cast a bunch of times over here. Click on this mesh, make sure it's active. And before I just select this operator, I'm going to hold down Shift before I run it. And that will run it twice automatically. So it's sort of like a hidden algorithm. You can see how we have. Uh, that mesh placed on both of the endpoints and it actually flipped one of the sides for us so that the caps are facing each other correctly. So it saves you a lot of time for creating cable connectors. So of course I didn't cover every single thing in detail. There's so much more you can do and you can combine these tools with each other. 
For example, you can combine the wire generator with the preset browser and create something awesome in a matter of seconds. But any issues that you encounter, just let me know. There's some that I'm already aware of and I'll try to tackle those as soon as I can.